they can go up where we come. He's taking off, he's going to do a tour drop and come right back in. Okay, this is one of our two ground transmitters. We have two transmitters on the ground, and then one reference station, and that's all you need on the ground. What's inside here is we have one of our circuit boards inside this little silver box, which keeps the signal that it's generating from going anywhere but out the antenna where we want it to be. That silver box talks to these two, attenuators which set the signal strength. The signal goes out the antenna and it also goes out this uh, connector to the reference station which is over there somewhere and the reference station measures the signals from the two transmitters and from the satellites and sends them all up to the airplane on a radio modem. The signals leave the transmitter go up to the receiver antenna on the bottom of the airplane. There's another antenna just like this on the top of the airplane that's receiving the satellite signals. Successful batch. Hey, successful right. batch. Good data. Right, I did. Technically, it's, it's a very compelling demonstration of what we knew the technology was capable of. Uh, secondly, we put together a very nice team of industry, uh, academia, and government to, to bring this off. Yeah, you know, this is something new, and everybody's saying, well, let's take it very cautious. Let's uh, do a few uh, hand-flown flight director approaches, and we, which we did, and everything was so smooth, and then we just put the autopilot on and started doing our approaches, and uh, it worked out very well. So from no, no nervousness from your point oh, of view? Oh, no, no. We had people, uh, of course, Stuart, the Stanford guy's back in the back monitoring the, his, uh, his instrumentation, and he could tell me right away if it was a bad signal. And of course, you never did have to. 
And if it was a bad signal, I'd have flags up front tell me the same thing. So no, there was no nervousness. Now wait a minute. I feel a little bit nervous if I were in an airplane that was being being guided down to the ground by a system designed by a student. <laughs> Well, these are very sharp students. I've really been impressed with these people from Stanford. We've taken the technology out of the laboratory and brought it to the point where we're testing it on a commercial air transport. What we're really talking about is safety and efficiency. We're talking about saving money, lives, and time, and building up a technology that can eventually be used not only for the large air carriers like this 737 and others, but also for the small general aviation pilots. Oh, it's going to make a tremendous impact for air traffic delays as well as the overall operating efficiency of the airline. Uh, we'll be able to hold our schedule better in bad weather and we'll also have more flexibility to have a more efficient schedule even when the weather's good. This is the lower GPS antenna for receiving the pseudolite from signals from the ground that's out in the approach path. And what we did here, actually normally an antenna for the air phone is installed in this location. And we put an adapter plate in here. And so the GPS antenna mounts to the adapter plate, which then mounts into the existing holes in the airplane. So for this antenna, there is no permanent change to the airplane at this location when we take the antenna back out and put the airplane back in service. I got seven minutes of tape. Taking a satellite signal that's 11,000 miles away and showing that it can have the integrity or the confidence in the signal of one part in a billion has remarkable implications for the, for the air carrier passenger. And it means not only can air carriers, air carrier passengers enjoy probably what is likely to be the safest landing system that has ever been developed in the history of avionics, but also extending that same level of performance to the, the small aircraft owner and operator as well. So the, the, the implications are, are perhaps rather, rather far reaching. So when the FAA came to the Air Transport Association, asking for airline participation in this project, we saw it as a real winner. We're really looking to get away from the expensive ground-based systems to putting capabilities in the airplanes that will enable us to have the kind of capabilities that we now enjoy only at major airports to have at every community that we serve and to do so at lower cost.